Today, photo composition and U, and the U is really going to be P here. So, I'm going to start by asking you guys a few questions. Uh, how many of you own a DSLR? So, a big fancy camera. So, uh, quite a few of you. So, if I could ask you guys, what, in your opinion, makes a photo appealing? Yes? It goes with your perception, what you think of. You know, uh, like, she will. Uh, the model, one of the model she was saying you can take photos, but according to me, uh, but it, it 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 gives a inner feeling, you know. Um, for me, if you talk about like I used to take pictures, uh, that relates with my with, with my dreams, and uh, it it is all about creativity. And uh, if you if you think good, if you think big. And you keep on, uh, it's, a, it's a continuous process. Like you develop yourself taking pictures and just bring like what the, what the things say about themselves. Okay, I like it. Yeah. Anyone else? So if you, when you look at a photo, what do you look for that makes it appealing to you? It tells a story. And for example, what story is this one telling you? I mean, it's interesting because we all have different perspectives of what we feel once we see a photo, don't we? There's a million stories you can tell. Exactly. And a million things you can feel, right? And we don't even need people sometimes, but like, for example, looking at this can be heart melting to people. I mean, it gives me personally nostalgia, but it also depends on our past. Because what we see, we connect it to our feelings and uh, what we've been through before. So, what I'm trying to get at is what makes a photo appealing is the value that the person <laughs> is placing on that image. So whether it be the, the monetary value or the aesthetic value or the personal value for uh, the person who may be looking at this image. So that's what we have to remember. Photos are representations of reality. They are not actual physical copies of what we are, we are seeing. They are representation. And through the composition of the photographer, it is his job to relay his story in hopes that person looking at the photo uh, achieves the same uh, value that he did, but it's always going to vary from photographer to photographer. So rule number one is, in my opinion, that there really are no rules when it comes to composition, technically, of course. Uh, everybody knows about the rule of thirds, right? Stuff like that, separating your image into, into a 9 by a 3 by 3 grid and then offsetting your main subject so you get a little bit of negative space and just stuff like that but when it comes down to composition uh, basically the way you tell your story through the photo is basically going to determine whether or not it's appealing so technically once you get the basics down you don't really need uh, rule of thirds or headroom or walking space or negative space such as this you compose your photo with how you, you frame your subjects. So I'll start off with what is your job as a photographer and when I came up with this I didn't want to think of anything like oh you gotta uh, make money, uh, impress everybody, like no it's how, how you should properly frame your photos. So when I'm looking at it I wanted to capture motion tell a story and compose, and that's not a, once again, rule of thirds, it's uh, making your subject look nice through how you uh, basically control them and what they do, so uh, head tilting, stuff like that. So we'll start off with simply emotion. So you really want to make your por portrait seem natural. This is actually uh, my two friends for their YouTube page. They had me uh, do a shoot for them. and. Uh, one may describe it as flamboyant, but uh, they, they really enjoyed it. So uh, when I when I uh, when I'm taking photos of people specifically, I try to make it seem as natural as possible. So I'm not a huge fan of the rugged, uh, you know, looking off to the side, down, huge lights coming off. I, I like I like people to naturally uh, be smiling and happy. So it's your job to make them feel comfortable. So uh, don't tell them like, oh, you look awful when you do something like that. Tell them uh, this would look a lot better 
if you did this, or uh, make jokes, uh, get, get that natural smile out of them. So I was probably making some stupid joke that made him uh, put his hands like this. And uh, yeah, really don't try and force it. Don't, don't tell them to smile. Uh, telling them to smile, you're, you normally get a, a real TV smile, and you don't really want something like that. And you have to remember, each photo you take should be custom to each person, so you shouldn't have pose four, shot five for each person. You're like, okay, in this situation, how can I best use what is around me to bring out their best emotion and bring out uh, the best in them as a person? And then, of course, telling a story, which was brought up earlier. So your photos don't always need emotion, but emotion can help tell the story. As you can see in this image, uh, really no emotion whatsoever, maybe with the body language, casual. But uh, when you look at something like this, uh, what story does it tell you? That he's skating. Skating? <laughs> So of course no, we really <laughs> we have the the initial value of a photo. So what it is on top, but photos are made up of layers. So you have your initial uh, what it is. It's a picture of a man skating. But then you can look at the symbolic value of you have of course the lamps going down. So he's moving in a direction, moving forward possibly from an event that happened to him in the past. And casually he doesn't really care about what's happening. So it's your job through framing, you decide what type of story you're going to tell. So I bring up people factor here. So when you're trying to tell a story in a photo, it really does help to have people in it. So uh, people, through what they do emotionally, physically, it helps uh, really bring forward certain aspects of your story. And sometimes you are able to do it without people, of course, uh, with the way you may frame trees around a, a sunset, you get this feeling uh, of calm, and you can tell a story through that. But people factor is, uh, for people starting off, really trying to show, well, tell a story through what they're doing. People factor is uh, easy in that aspect. And a uh, question for you guys, when you were doing your photos, what did you try and do to uh, tell a story? I, I don't want to pick people, but I, there you go. I usually add subjects, uh, which are which are adding uh, emotions to the picture, and make them for the best. Okay. Anyone else? What about our uh, second place? Where, how did you tell your story through your photo? Honestly, it was a complete accident. I just happened to be down there and then the birds were there. Um, I guess, in general, I would think of framing. So you add certain things to your shots to make the viewer think of certain things. Like putting a bench in there makes you think of you know, time passing and um, contemplation maybe, or adding a tree gives you more, um, more of a feeling of nature or just something like that. Like be aware of what's exactly in your picture. All right, that's good. Okay, so yeah, telling a story. And a third, of course, compose. So uh, people, I, I use beautiful, but people want to look nice in, in their photos, and sometimes they, they can't do that naturally. So it is, uh, it's your job as a photographer to basically bring out the best in them. So the shot of the hands there, Basically, had they put the hands they wanted to originally when I took the photo, it wouldn't have looked right. It was all interlocked. You weren't really getting much motion from it. So I put them kind of in an awkward position by kind of messing around with their hands. You get the photo you want, and you invoke the emotion that you want. You really get a nice, warm, loving feeling when you look at something like that. And then, of course, uh, we have this gentleman here. Uh, and I, I wanted it. It just kind of seemed casual in the way he was happy. So maybe putting his hand on his chin, you know, hand across the chest, really something natural, and then uh, making him laugh to get that nice natural smile. And it really helps to, when you're talking to your subjects, to really make them feel good about themselves when you are composing 
uh, a trick I find best when I'm trying to get people to pose the way I want, I find mirroring is best. So tell them to just do exactly what you do or have them follow you around if you want them to turn in a certain direction. Don't say turn right, turn left, because they're not going to do exactly what you want. But if you are leading them around, it's a lot easier to get them to do what you want to do. And then the you factor. So what makes your photos unique? That's, I, I want to say really my goal through uh, helping lead this club. I want to find out what is best in your photography and really bring that out. So if, let's say you're not best in portraiture. Like, yeah, we'll go do portraits, make it better. But if you're better, let's say, uh, astro photography or taking photos of the stars, we want to bring that out and find out what factors in your photos can really make it better and make that consistent because our, our job is really to make you guys better photographers at the end of the day. So yeah, what do you, just what do you bring out compositionally? So uh, personally, when I take certain photos, I like a lot of negative space. I like, if my dream photo would be tiny tree, giant blue sky. Uh, so this one I love because I love negative space. And you just have that giant uh, white expanse with a nice black guitar, black guitar, uh, had created a nice contrast in the environment. Thought it was a very well composed photo. And then this one I found uh, very similar to a photo I took a while back, but it told a story like the rough student, you know, walking through the, walking down the street, where she, he or she, not so sure who took it, uh, framed the photo, you know, stuff on her back showing. Maybe she's determined. Uh, the snow showing uh, how tough the environment is. Yeah. And then this one, once again, her uh, color separation. So she, he or she only used the red. So you have the red Canadian flag, the red, I think it's a tractor. And then uh, the red tracksuit. It created a very, I felt, patriotic image. You know, look like a standard Canadian uh, Canadian winter for you. Now, what would you guys see in a photo like this? I mean, what sticks out to you? Red. Red? Yeah, obviously. But yeah, through color separation, he or she was able to tell their story. And that, this was probably one of my favorite images that was submitted. Once again, the, the color saturation. And the light in the background, the uh, the way uh, her face wasn't the main, the main subject, it was the glove, but the face helped tell that story, which was uh, quite enjoyable.